So hello everybody, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curva.com and into this video I'm going to show you how to create a dumbbell chart using Charticulator. Dumbbell charts are very useful for comparing two categories like male or female or I don't know, employed and unemployed or you know my example is going to be sales this year against last year this type of thing. So let's get started. Okay guys, first of all, as always Charticulator. So click on launch and then put in the data. The data is from the Northwind data set. I'm going to show you then in Power BI how it looks, but I prefer to create my charts in Charticulator web and then we can import it in Power BI. So we get the data in. This is how it looks. So we have category name, the sales for 2017 and 18, and then we have the difference between the two years and then we have an, another co column that I've created just to be able to conditional format the labels. I'll show you. Okay, so in order to create a dumbbell chart, the first thing that we're going to start with is actually the legend. You're going to get custom column names and then we're going to get 2017 and 2018 sales. Create legend. And then here on the legend attributes, you go here, edit scale colors, and then you give it a color. So, I don't know, blue, and for 2019, uh, violet, okay? So, that will set the legend in there. The next thing that we're going to do is prepare the chart. What we want to do is, we don't want to have the bars like that, we want to have the bars like that. So, we're going to stack why so it will get like that okay and let's do this a little bit bigger because this is where the magic is going to happen let's see so in here we're going to go to data axis and i'm going to drop it in there and then i'm going to drop in sales 2017 and sales 2018 and it will give us the average for both points. The next thing that we're going to do is create a link from there to there. And you see what happens? And I'm going to then drop a, 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 a... Okay, so now we're going to put the circles on the end of the bar. So you go here to symbol and then you drop it in there. It's not going to drop in there though. So what you need to do is you need to move it to the end of the stick and it will adjust in there. You'll see it there. And then the other one, you move it to the end of the other stick. Select it first and move it to the end. And then you'll see it there. So now you can see that our chart is starting to form. Let's put it back, make it smaller. And now we're going to work with the properties so we can actually start formatting these properly. So I am going to symbol one, symbol two, which one is one? If you want to know which one is the, you can actually, you know, hide it and hide it. So this is, we want to have the feel by the legend. So those are 2017 sales, and then this is 2018. We do the same thing, but not that color. We actually want to have the um, 2019 uh, color. Um, what else do we want to do? We want to make them a little bit bigger. Maybe that's too much. Let's say 200. And then this one, we want to also make it a little bit bigger, 200. And this is the line we want to have a um, like light gray, something like that, a little bit thicker. So good. Let's give this a world. We're going to call this sales seventeen versus eighteen. Now. Let's put the labels in. So to put the labels, you might think, oh, this is, I put this on the axis. There's no axis here. What we need to do is open our glyph again. 
and we're going to drop a text box in there. And again, it's going to put it in the, in the middle of the axis, but we don't want that. We want to put these at the end of the axis. So I'm going to grab it and move it. So we're going to set it there and then the text, we're going to put it closer. How about like that? Perfect. Do you see it in there? And then I am going to, to that text. Put it in there. So to that text, we want to have the category name. So you'll see here that is changing. Your name beautiful now. Let's take care of that axis, uh, which is the data axis. We want to put these the other way around, and the color I want to have it not as black as it is, it is way too black. So let's put it like grayish. So there you go. Now, what else do we need to do? The next thing I'm going to do. As you saw on the picture, I don't have the labels for the the end of the of the balls, but you can actually have them. I'm going to show you how to create them. Another thing that I'm going to do now is also sort by sales. So you can actually see with your eyes how this, this is sorted by 2018. So it goes like this, ding, 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 ding. Okay, beautiful. So let's put some labels in here. This is actually exactly the same procedure as before. We're going to make this glyph a little bit bigger and I'm going to drop the text. You want to drop it to close to the ball in there. And then I'm going to put it not... I want to put it up there. And then I'm going to drop another one into the other ball. And then I want to have one in here. And that is not an easy one to grab. I wish that you could just dump them there and it will... Oh, it just found it. So now we have one in for each um, end and then one for the middle. We're going to put this for 2018, 2017, and this is going to be for the variance, for the difference between the two years. So let's do it. So which one is the, which one? Just hide it. This is the variance. So I am going to put, let's put it there. So I'm going to put the variance in there. And then we're going to format it the same way as we did on previous videos. So we're going to put the dollar sign we're going to divide it by a thousand, so we don't have so many numbers. We're going to, don't want any decimals, and we want to indicate that it's a thousand numbers, so the key. Um, I obviously did something wrong, and is that there's no backslash. Okay, so you see, working perfectly. Uh, if we go to text three, which is 2017 sales. We're going to do the same thing, 2017. Okay, so now we have all the labels. We need to color them, right? So 2018, the color is supposed to be uh, this violet. And you can do a little bit bigger, something like that. Then for the 2017, we have color blue. You can make it a little bit bigger, for example. Now, I don't want to see them at the moment, maybe later on, but for now, I just want to see the variance between them. And the variance I want to color, I want to see the number red, if it is um, less sales than previous year, and green if it is higher sales. So how do you do that? That's how why I created these color bar. Um, where can I see it? Here. So it says here that if the variance, so if the sales between 2017 and 2019 is negative, then negative. So the, is, there is, it is a column that says negative and positive only. So if I put in 
let me open that again. So for color, I'm going to put this color variance in there. And you see that it colors. If you go in here, I can then do negative is red, positive is green. How cool is that? And we're going to put a text that is a little bit bold so you can see. And maybe do it a little bit bigger. So beautiful. And now we can, I don't know, the chart giving a little bit of background so we can actually see something blue maybe. And that we have our dumbbell chart. And you can easily see that beverages was the one that we did worse than last year and dairy products is the one that we did best and it's like really neat to see. Now let me show you how it looks in Power BI. So this is how it looks in charting in Power BI. So as you can see, this is a Northwind dataset. I am linking directly to the fields on our tables. And then here we have the chart. It just looks gorgeous. We have, uh, this was created here, but you can obviously import the chart if you want. And then you have to be careful when you resize though, because the text does not resize always the way you want it. So as you can see here, you will need to go back to uh, Charticulator and let me show you, edit. And these ones, the, I think is this, you are going to have to give it a little bit less. And now you have a working chart. Probably you will have to do also the balls a little bit <laughs> smaller, but yeah. I guess they will fix this when time comes. So this is how to create a dumbbell using Charticulator for your Power BI data. So cool. So let me know if there's any chart that you would like me to do. Just tweet at me. So I'll give it my best to try to reproduce it. I will see you again next week with more Charticulator videos. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.